Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and very excited that you're joining me today for our little bit of crafty fun. So if you're watching this video when it premieres, it is Tuesday, August 6th, August 6th, starting off a new month. So what does that mean, August 6th? So August Bonus day coupons can now be redeemed. So if you placed orders with Stampin' Up! during the month of July and earned bonus day coupons, you can redeem those now, right? You have until the end of August. So don't lose those $5 coupons that you got. You could stack them and redeem as many as you want at one time. All right? So definitely get your orders in and get those going. I also have my um, Birdhouse Blooms class registration closing on the 10th. So that's happening this Saturday. So don't miss out. You can see a sneak peek behind me of the projects. Yes, you can. Um, it is a fab fabulous five card class to go. Uh, it is a limited release. So um, it is available while supplies last. So hopefully you will come and join me for that. All right. And I also have registration going on for my Cultivated Creativity DIY Paper Crafting Kit. And this month, we are featuring the Frosted Forest Bundle. And so we're doing some fun ink blending techniques. But the best way to stay up to date with everything I've got going on is to join my email list. Yes, it is. And each and every month, I will send you, as a gift, a tutorial bundle. Yes, a bundle of tutorials for you to enjoy as a thank you. All right? So... Let's go ahead and switch the camera over and get to our crafty fun. All right, so today's project features the Citrus Blooms Bundle that is in our annual catalog. I love this one. It's got um, such a great color scheme to it. I love the navy, the yellow, the orange, um, and I love the citrus. It's just, I, it's, I just love it. It's beautiful. It's got great prints. Um, it makes such classic looking cards. So we are going to use this one. Now the citrus blooms are, or the citrus, sweet citrus, uh, sweet is the one that we are featuring in this month's all-star video class tutorial bundle. So that means that I have a set of tutorials, 12 um, video tutorials that you can earn for free when you place a $50 or greater purchase with me in our online store. So that's awesome. Um, you can also purchase it from me um, for $15. But why if you can get it for free? Unless you happen to live outside of the U.S., then yes, you can purchase the tutorial, right? Um, okay, so the project we're making today is this fantastic gift card holder. So I love it. I've kept it super simple, right? Featuring the prints of the designer series paper, bringing in some fabulous sparkle ribbon. And then this opens up. You've got your design to the inside, just pulling in some of the designer paper. And then you've got a little pocket where you can place your gift card. Love it? I hope so. All right, let's get started on this one. I'm going to set this aside. We're going to start off by scoring our card base. So um, the complete supply list and cut dimensions will be posted on my blog tomorrow, uh, actually tomorrow more evening-ish, um, because this is my project for our blog hop. So you'll be able to see 12, hopefully 12 additional projects using this suite. So you're gonna have tons of ideas um, to use uh, this particular one. All right, so we've got an 11 inch by four and a quarter Knight of Navy card base, and I'm gonna score this at one and a half, and five and one half. Okay, super easy. Put that away. All right, so now I wanna go ahead and fold these along the score line. Give it a really good crease. And I'll do this one as well, because this is gonna be my pocket. All right, and before we adhere this in place, I wanna put a little thumb, thumb hole because it does make it a little easier to get your gift card in and out. So I'm using my one and three quarter circle punch. I'm gonna unlock that, so just slide that over, it unlocks. And I'm gonna slide this skinny end, and I'm placing it so the end of my punch is at that score line, and I'm somewhat centered left to right. And I'm just gonna give that a squeeze, punches out my little thumb hole. And then to put this away, I squeeze, lock it, and now it's ready to just put away on my shelf. Yay! 
All right, so let's go ahead and close this little uh, tab first. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of liquid glue uh, because I want a skinny edge. And because we're gonna be sliding something in and out, I definitely want a nice strong hold on that. So let's give that a good push. It might ooze out a little bit, it did. Liquid glue and I don't always get along. So let's see if I've got a towel. I do. My chamois, of course, is in the other room. <laughs> always how it works, right? Okay, so we've got that closed. So let's go ahead and decorate the inside since we're in there. So I've got a piece of five and a quarter by four designer series paper from the pack. So many great prints, so many great prints. And we're gonna put this right down on our card base. I told you this one was super easy. All right, so now I've got a white layer that measures four and a quarter by three and a quarter that I'm gonna put in here. But I wanna bring the design to the inside. So I've got these lovely little edges from my designer paper and I'm actually just going to fussy cut one of these little elements right out of the paper. How cute is that? So let's go ahead and cut that out. So when I fussy cut, and you could use either one, right? Depends on what you wanna do. You could use this one if you prefer. Either one is gonna work. I can make multiple cards too, right? Um, so I use the lemons on the first one. So we're pulling in some of the oranges on this one. Um, so when I fussy cut, I like to cut down deep in the scissor, right? I'm gonna get a better cut. And then I also like to move the paper versus moving the scissor. Now the oranges, or some of the oranges, maybe it is all of the oranges, on this designer paper do line up to the dies. I chose to fussy cut because on the original, I used the lemons, which the dies don't line up to. So I thought we'd just fussy cut a little bit, but you can check your dies and see if it aligns to your designer paper. I love that Stampin' Up! does that. And then you can die cut, especially if fussy cutting isn't your jam, right? Like some people love it, some people hate it. I am not a huge fussy cut fan, but you know what? Sometimes you just need to fussy cut something, right? It, it calls for it. So super easy to do this. And then I wanna adhere this down to this white layer. So I'm just gonna use a little liquid glue and place that right in the corner. It, it's just such an easy way um, to bring that design to the inside by adding that little bitty element. And it uses up those little bits that you might not have used otherwise, right? Like after you cut out all the whole um, oranges, orange clusters out of the paper, you have all these edges. You're like, what do I do with this? Well, this is exactly what you do with that. All right, I gotta, I'm off camera, I know. But I'll fix that in just a second. I need, I've got stickiness going on, so I need to, I should be pulling in my silicone craft sheet, <laughs> but I didn't. It's right here too, it's just buried. All right, so we will let that dry. Nice, so cute. So let's go ahead and put this layer inside. A little stamp and seal. And I'm gonna try to center this left, right, top to bottom. Super sweet, super, super sweet. And your gift card is gonna fit right inside that pocket. So you can do it this way or this way, whichever makes your heart happy. Now, if you wanted to add a, another layer here, you totally could do that. All right, front. We've got a piece of three and three quarters by four designer series paper. So let's go ahead and put that down. Got great orange clusters on the back. So really, it just depends on the color scheme you want, yellow or the orange, based on the paper print that you pick. All right, now I chose a little different print of the designer paper. So this one I had small lemons, this one had lemons and oranges on it, but I'm bringing in a little bit of a different color scheme, pulling in that orange, which I love. So I'm taking this uh, amazing navy and gold glittery ribbon. This is a carryover that we've had, um, I think it was from the mini, one of the past minis it carried over from. So excited that that is in our catalog. Now, before I put this on, I, I'm gonna stop myself right there. I need to do my label because I'm going to string it through the hole. So I'm using the greetings of the season. Love these dies. This is part of our online exclusives and I've cut the oval out and it gives me a hole as part of this, this die. So this is a fantastic die set. 
definitely recommend you check that out in the online store. Let's go ahead and add our sentiment so that we can string this through as we set this up. So I'm doing, you're the best kind of person. I love that. And I'm finding I'm catching an edge on here. So I need to be careful. I can either wipe that off or I just need to be careful that I don't rock this. And I can be a rocker. Oh, I did okay. But if, you, if you're finding that you're catching that edge when you're stamping, you're probably rocking the stamp a little bit and that's okay, we do it. But then if you know that that's your style and you can't fix that, wipe that edge off before you stamp, right? That's the trick. So that'll save you so much in the long run. Okay, so now that we've got this worked out, I've got adhesive on this, so I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. I want this to string through this hole. So I'm just going to ball that up a little bit, and I'm going to go down into that hole. Maybe. Well, here we go. Try it again. You may need to angle cut it. I blunt cut it because I was going to wrap it, but... Might have been a good idea for me to angle cut it. All right, so I just want this label strung in there. I'm not gonna worry about placement or any of that right now. I wanna get this ribbon adhered down in place. So that's about where I want it maybe. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'll wrap these ends to the back where I added that adhesive earlier, right? Get that nice and flat. All right, let me double check it. Yep, it's looking pretty good. Now, let me grab my silicone craft sheet so this doesn't stick everywhere. All right, so now I can go ahead and finish my uh, putting my label down. So I can slide it one way or the other wherever I want it on this card. I kind of like it over to the right a little bit. Now, you can put this down flat or you can pop it up. You know I'm gonna pop it up, right? I love the height. I love all the dimensionals. I don't think you can have too many, right? And I'm gonna be excessive because this is glittery ribbon. So um, it's got a lot of texture to it. So I wanna make sure I get a good adherence. So I'm using a, a little more than I would normally. I normally would only put two or three dimensionals on something like this, but we're gonna go all in, right? All right. There we go. Now this is nice and secure. All right, the next thing we need to do is layer this on our cardstock, but we have to make a decision. Do we want to stay with the yellow, the Daffodil Delight that we did on the first one? Nice. Or do we want to switch it out to Pumpkin Pie, which gives it another feel? Hmm. I like them both. But you know what? Let's go Pumpkin Pie on this one. Why not? We'll change it out. So this is four and a quarter by three and a quarter, same as the inside layer. So part of the reason we went ahead and did the inside first was because now I know exactly where I need to place this because I wanna cover up that inside layer. I don't wanna be able to see that. So I got all my adhesive down there. So it's just flat down on this layer here. And then I wanna place this so it covers that. Now, I want to pop up this layer as well. Again, you don't have to do that. So I'm going to put dimensionals on the end. And then I'm going to put dimensionals on the edge of this layer. Now, I am fortunate enough, I have that white layer underneath, so I know exactly where I need to put those. But this way, I've got dimensionals that are going to give me the securest, most stable version of this layer, and I won't get it over too far, right? If I were to put it directly on that layer, just kind of helps. All right, and then I'm just gonna put this down, give that a good push. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, let's add our bow. So we could have strung this through, wrapped it around the layer and tied our bow, but I find that this ribbon is a little bit tricky to work with. So anytime you have the glittery on it, it's a, it's got almost a, a, a tackiness to it. It's not sticky, but it, it kind of is. You know what I mean? Like it's a little harder to work with sometimes. So I'm going to wrap this around. I'm going to do my two loops, crisscross applesauce, right? Uh, loop goes down into the hole, and I'm going to come back around. You know what? I need to do this facing the other direction. Let me come around here. My, my bows always end up upside down, and I want the tails going that way. So this is why I had to flip around. I don't know if you have that trouble, but I do. All right, so there's my ugly bow. I'm gonna hold the knot. 
and I'm going to pull this, and that's not the easiest thing to do with this ribbon. Like I said, you might have to kind of work with it a little bit, and then I'm going to pull it tight again, and it might take you a few tries, right, to get the look that you're wanting with this ribbon. Um, it's fabulous, though. It's so pretty. You can leave the tails as long or as short as you want them. It's entirely up to you. Um, so I, I don't think I mentioned it. I, I pulled off about 12 inches. Sometimes I don't pull it off the spool, but this time I did, and I wanted a little extra to be able to work with it. But that's a gorgeous bow. It ties really nicely once you get it tied the way you want it to, right? Um, it looks like I've got this lifting a little bit because I might have pulled it a little bit tight. So I'm just going to give that a little pull. And I might need to come back and add a little adhesive there. Let's see if I can. Let's, let's use a little bit of liquid glue on there. I don't want to come out too far, right? Because I don't want it to show, but I want that secured. So I'm just going to hold that for a moment. Get my lid back on my, my glue. And of course I'm sticky right there. Get that little hold down. Oh, my towel stuck to it. There we go. All right, beautiful. I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so let's finish this off with a few of the Opal Round Assortment. As you can tell, I love these. I've used a lot of them, right? And I'm gonna pull in the yellow ones. I did that on the original, and I think I'm gonna do it again here because I think it ties in really nicely, right? And they're so subtle, you don't really, you know, they're not a big, a big clunky, um, you know, element that's going to change up your design, take away from your design, it enhances it, all right? So we've got the orange and the yellow version. So pumpkin pie or daffodil delight. Do you love them both? I sure do. I hope that you guys will give this a try and don't forget to check out all the other projects in the hop. Um, I think you'll love them. And if you're enjoying the content, give me a thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing okay. And share this with your crafty friends. I'd love for them to take a break with us on Tuesdays um, for a little bit of paper crafting fun. All right. I hope to see you all again next Tuesday. And 